Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with over 167 episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Dangerous Assignment. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble, but... When I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to wind up with somebody trying his best to hand me a present. A load of dynamite with a lit fuse. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth left a note on my desk if you wanted to see me. Uh, incidentally, where is she? Down at the Red Cross Blood Bank, donating some blood. I gave her the day off. I've got a date for the same thing. Every American should donate blood to the Red Cross. But right now, take a look at this. A piece of string? Describe it to me as accurately as you can. What? Is this some kind of a game? You'll know better in a moment now. Describe that piece of string to me. Okay, okay. It's about a foot long. Eleven inches, to be exact. Okay, eleven inches. It's got four knots. Right. And they're unevenly spaced. Well, that's about all I can see. So, you're a string saver, Commissioner. Is that what you called me in here to tell me? Not exactly. In the first place, I have a hunch that's about the most important piece of string in the world right now. Why? And in the second place, it's not mine. Belong to Jim Slater. Oh, is Jim back? That's good. Jim's dead, Steve. What? Hey, let me have that again. He was murdered in Panama the night before last. Jim Slater? Yeah, I know. He was one of your best friends, Steve. That's why I figured you'd want to take over his assignment. Yeah, I do. But I never knew what Jim was working on, Commissioner. He just dropped out of sight about a month ago. Very few people did know about his assignment, Steve. I sent him to Panama a month ago. Panama? What's going on down there? Plenty, I'm afraid. Steve... Jim Slater was down there investigating a series of thefts that have been going on for the last six months. Civilian construction camps and army engineer stations have been systematically burglarized. Look, isn't that a matter for the national police in Panama? Then what's been stolen makes it strictly our business, Steve. Oh, well, what has been stolen? Dynamite. And that's what Jim Slater was working on, huh? That's right. And it looks like he was on the trail or something, Steve. They found his body in an apartment in Panama City... The apartment had been ransacked and all his papers and reports had been burned. But I still don't see what that piece of string's got to do with all this. The string was found in Slater's pocket, Steve. It was flown up here immediately. Right now, it's our only lead. Any contacts in Panama who can help me? Yes, Major Dean of Army Intelligence. Steve, get down there and work with Dean. Try to figure out what that string means. And above all, find that stolen dynamite before it's too late. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignments, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you'll find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Jerry, I've got my assignment. Fly down to Panama and find out who's been stealing dynamite and where they've got it hidden before they blow up the whole joint. All I've got to go on is a piece of string that may not have anything to do with it. A real cinch. It's Tuesday when my plane lands in Panama, and I head for Army Intelligence Headquarters and Major Dean. I've been expecting you, Mitchell. Looks like a sweet mess they've dropped in your lap. Yeah. According to the commissioner, there's been enough dynamite stolen over the past six months to blow up the whole works down here. Just about. You know, there hasn't been much talk or publicity about the canal lately, but it's still just as important as ever. 
If for any reason our ships couldn't use it in the event of war, it could be pretty disastrous. I know. Look, I brought this piece of string with me, oh. Dean, and right now I'm feeling slightly foolish about well, it all. I don't blame you. Piece of string, 11 inches long with four knots in it. Yeah. And that's supposed to be the key to the whole deal. Uh, do you think it is? I don't know what to think, Mitchell. All I know is they found it in Slater's pocket. Yeah. He uh, must have been pretty close. That's obviously why he was killed. Mm-hmm. How about his apartment? Have you got a key? Yeah, we've kept it locked up since the murder. Uh, here it is. I'll write down the address for you. Okay, thanks. I'll take a look around there and see if I can find anything that'll help make some sense out of this hunk of string. So I head for Slater's apartment. I search it from one end to the other, but all his papers have been destroyed and there's nothing in the apartment to give me any leads at all. Just as I'm finishing up, the doorbell rings. Yeah? Oh, uh, Jim here? Jim? Jim Slater. This is his apartment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, look, is he here or not? Who are you? Well, my name's Ferguson. I'm a friend of Jim's. Say, what is all this? Come on in. Where is Jim Slater? Dead. What? How did it happen? An accident? No, he was murdered. Murdered? By by whom? That's what I'm trying to find out. You say you're a friend of Jim's. He was murdered a couple of days ago. It's strange that you didn't know about it. Well, I, I've been in the interior for the last couple of weeks. Oh? Look, if I'd known he was dead, would I come up here to see him? I don't suppose so. How long have you known Slater? Just since he came down here to Panama a couple of months ago. But we seem to hit it off real well right from the start. How did the two of you meet? Why, in a bar, as a matter of fact. Uh, look, all these questions. Who are you? My name is Mitchell. I'm a friend of Slater's, too. Oh. Did he tell you why he was down here in Panama? Well, he said he was just knocking around. I see. How about you? You work here? Yeah. I'm a civilian employee of the Army Engineers down oh, here. Oh? What kind of work do you do? Allocation of supplies, material. Hey, must be a pretty big job. Keeps me busy, all right. <laughs> I guess the Army Engineers have about every kind of supplies there are, all the way from safety pins to dynamite, huh? Yeah. Look, you any idea why Slater was killed? Not the slightest, Ferguson. I thought maybe you might be able to help me there. What do you mean by that, Mitchell? Well, just that maybe knew you knew of someone who might have a reason for killing him. Oh. Well, afraid I don't. You didn't know any of his other friends, huh? Uh, just Alice. Who's she? Alice Gaines, a nurse out at Santo Tomas Hospital. The three of us used to do the town once in a while. I'm sure she couldn't possibly have had anything to do with it. Well, probably not. Okay, Ferguson, thanks for the information. I go out to the hospital and ask for Alice Gaines. They tell me she's out on the grounds with a patient. Outside, one of the orderlies points her out to me, and she's wheeling an old fellow along in one of the walks in a wheelchair. Miss Gaines? Uh, yes. I'm Steve Mitchell, a friend of Jim Slater's. Oh, Jim. You've heard about his death. Yes, I have. I'd like to talk to you for a moment, if I may. All right. This is Senor Morales, one of my patients. Senor Morales? How do you do? Senor, would you excuse me? Of course, my child. I will see it here. It feels good in the sun. All right, Mr. Mitchell. Ever since I read the story of Jim's murder in the papers, I haven't been able to think of anything else. Mr. Mitchell, who could have done such a thing? That's what I'm trying to find out, Miss Gaines. How well did you know Jim? Well, we hadn't known each other but a month or so. I felt I knew him pretty well. Well enough to worry about him anyway. Worry about him? Oh, he seemed so unsettled, just sort of drifting around. Claimed he was looking for a job, but he never seemed to be enthusiastic about it. I see. Instead, he spent a lot of time hanging around bars with some pretty unsavory characters. What do you mean by that? Oh, a bunch of political agitators, people like that. I used to read the riot act to him about it. He just sort of laughed and kicked me out of it. Now he's gone. It's pretty hard to believe. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell, do you think... One of those people he used to hang around with could have killed him? I don't know. That's possible. But why? Look, you're asking me questions I can't answer right now, but thanks very much for the information you've given me. I'll see you later. Well, Steve, so far you've collected yourself a couple of suspects, Ferguson and Alice Gaines. Yeah, you think they could be working together? I doubt it if they are. Why would Ferguson tip me off about her in the first place? Uh, that's right. It doesn't figure. 
Now, you say that neither of them apparently knew what Slater was doing here in Panama? That's what they told me. Whether they were lying or not is something else again. Oh, speaking of something else, how about that piece of string? You got any glimmer on where it figures in this deal? Not the slightest. Matter of fact, I'm beginning to think there's no connection at all. Well, you may be right. What time is it, Steve? Twenty minutes past midnight. Well, there's not much more we can do tonight. Let's... Excuse me, will you? Mm-hmm. Major Dean speaking. Hello, Yeah? What? Let's have that again. There's been a rentist of one of the front porch. Yeah, where? Oh, that's all. I see. How long ago? Five minutes. Okay, we'll be right over. Something the matter? I'll say there is. That outfit must think they're really safe again now they've knocked off Slater. What do you mean? They just pulled a raid on a civilian construction company in a little town about a dozen miles from here. And got away with 50 cases of dynamite. Why? Yeah, but I think we've got one of them. They're holding him out there for us, a native named Miguel. Come on, I want to talk to this Miguel real bad. Maybe I can trade this piece of string for a real live suspect. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's fun tomorrow on NBC with two of your favorite families. There's The Blandings, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, the owners of the beautiful, expensive, and troublesome dream house. And the hilarious Harrises with Frankie, Brother Willie, Julius, and all the other favorites of the Phil Harris Alice Faye show. That's tomorrow and every Sunday for Mr. and Mrs. Blandings, starring Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, and the Phil Harris Alice Faye show. Now back to Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Major Dean and I take off with the construction company's camp a dozen miles out of the city. There's a man waiting for us when we pull up in front of the shack. Mr. Mitchell! That's right. I'm Barrows, the night watchman. Barrows? This is Major Dean. Evening, Major. Hello, Barrows. Suppose you tell us what happened. Well, I was making my rounds an hour or so ago... Thought I saw something in the shadows near one of the sheds. So I went over to investigate and got jumped. Who jumped you? A couple of natives. Mm-hmm. I managed to clip one of them, but the other was giving me a bad time. While we were fighting, I heard a truck pull up in front of the shed where we store the dynamite. Long about then, I got tagged over the right ear and went out. Yeah, it's a nasty cut you got. But I must have been out only a couple of minutes because when I came to, the shed door was open and the truck was just pulling away. I saw a native running after the truck, trying to get aboard. So I scrambled around in the brush, found my gun, and threw a shot after him. Did you hit him? Well, he let out a yip. The truck speeded up, and the native took off into the bushes. And I followed. Five minutes later, I spied a guy hurrying along a dirt road. Same guy? Well, I couldn't be sure, but it must have been, because he was bleeding from the shoulder. But he denied having any part in it. Only thing he'd tell me was that his name is Miguel. Where is he now? Well, I bandaged his shoulder and... Locked him in the shack here. The shoulder. Did it look like a bullet wound to you? Sure did. Okay, good work, Barrows. Let's talk to him, Major. All right, sir. Now, here, uh, I'll just unlock this for you. Uh, thanks. Go ahead. Hello, Miguel. I don't know you. We want to ask you a few questions. Well, I don't know any answers. Why are you boys stealing dynamite? I don't steal no dynamite. What are you planning on using it for? Tell you, I don't steal no dynamite. How'd you get that bullet wound in your shoulder, then? Well, it's not a bullet wound. It's a cut from a knife. Oh. Now, look here, Miguel. Just a wanna... minute, Dean. Let's have him tell us how he got the knife cut, then. Go ahead, Miguel. Well, uh, there was a fight in the container in the barn. I got in the way, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the knife cuts my shoulder. I see. Well, what were you doing near the construction camp here? Oh, just walking along the road, bleeding. Well, all of a sudden, the American, he jump out at me and he say, I steal a dynamite and he lock me up in here. I don't steal no dynamite. You know, I think you're telling the truth, Miguel. You what? Say, I, I tell the truth. Well, I don't, don't lie. Uh, don't you think he's telling the truth, Major? Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he is too. Oh, it's good to hear. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter much anymore now that we know the big boy behind the operation. Yeah, that's, that's right, Steve. He's the one we're really after anyway. Okay, Miguel. You can shove off. Oh, gracias. Better keep out of these barroom brawls after this, huh? Oh, see, si, Miguel, stay out of the cantinas. Here, I better tell Barrows. Well, did you find out what you wanted to from him? We're letting him go, Barrows. You're let. Hey, what's the deal? We're convinced he's innocent. Okay, get going, Miguel. Buenas noches. 
Are you guys crazy? If he isn't mixed up in this deal, I'll... Hold it, Barrett. Hmm? You know, Steve, you were leaving me behind there for a minute. I finally caught on. Look, will somebody kindly tell me what this is all about? I don't think Miguel's too smart. He probably figures right now that he's put one over on us, and that's just what I want him to think. I still don't see why you told him you thought he was innocent. Mitchell also told him he knew where the big boy bossing the whole operation is. Well, do you? No, but if Miguel thinks we know who his boss is, he might try to warn him. And in the process, lead us to him. Oh, I see. He's out of sight now, Dean. Come on, let's tag along. We tail Miguel, keeping well back. He takes a dirt road to the village a mile or so away, and then he heads straight for the nearest bar. Dean and I wait a couple of minutes, and then we go inside. So Miguel was going to stay out of the cantinas, huh? Yeah, no willpower, I guess. Come on, let's ease over to this corner of the bar and try and keep ourselves as inconspicuous as okay, possible. Okay, Steve. Hey, you know, that's funny. What is? I don't see him anywhere. No, I don't either. So he didn't come in here just for a drink. You think he knew we were telling him, ducked out the back door? Maybe, yeah. Uh, we'd better... Hold it. Yeah, Miguel, coming out. Turn your back. We don't want him to spot us. Right. All right. Went outside. Hmm. He must have given the message to somebody in that back room. Think we ought to crash that party back there? We don't need to. Take a look. Yeah. Big guy in a white suit. Hey, that's Parker. Who's he? He owns this bar. We've had our eye on him for quite a while. Subversive? We've always thought so. Now it looks like we were right. Watch it. He's coming by us. Got a package in his hand about the size of a book. Yeah. Come on, let's see who he takes it to. If it is a book, I've got a hunch it makes pretty interesting reading. Parker gets in a car outside the bar and heads for the city. Major Dean and I follow. About 30 minutes later, he pulls up in front of an apartment house and goes inside. Steve, do you think this is headquarters? The apartment house? I don't know. Could be. Let's go inside. I wonder which apartment Parker was headed for. Hey, look, there's a row of mailboxes over there on the wall. Oh, good. We'll see if we recognize any of the names. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ramimros, Rent. Hey. Look at the name on mailbox number three. Alice Gaines. That's the nurse at Santa Tomas Hospital. Well, what do you know? Steve, look. Huh? Parker coming out of the door down the hall. That's her apartment, all right. Come on, out on the street. All right. Did you notice Parker didn't have the book anymore? Yeah. Come on down the sidewalk away. All right. Looks like our little game of who's who is over, Steve. That's probably why Slater struck up an acquaintance with Alice. He was trying to get a line on her. Yeah, but that still doesn't tell me what that string with the four knots is all about. Oh, oh look, there comes Parker. Heading for his car. Look, can you get a man to watch this apartment house? Sure, Steve. Have him tell us the minute that Alice leaves. All right. Hey, hmm? Parker's turning around, heading back the way he came. Should we tell him? I'd like you to, Dean. I'll wait here until your man arrives. Then I'm heading for Santa Tomas Hospital. Why the hospital? Look, there was a dynamite raid last night. It was probably engineered by the boss of the operation. Right now, it looks like Alice is the boss. I just remembered someone at the hospital who can tell me whether or not Alice was on duty last night. So I head for Santa Tomas. After walking around the grounds for a few minutes, I spot the guy I'm looking for, Senor Morales. The patient in the wheelchair. He's sitting over near one of the fountains. Oh, good afternoon, Senor. Mitchell is in a... That's right, Senor Morales. I presume you would like to talk to Alice, but she is not on duty yet. Matter of fact, I came here to talk to you, Senor Morales. Indeed, and how may I serve you? Is uh, Alice Gaines your regular nurse? She and I have never seen a better one. She takes excellent care of me. What uh, hours are her duty hours? From four in the afternoon until midnight. How about last night? Last night? What do you mean? Was she on duty all evening? We, oh, yeah, as far as I know. Oh, oh, wait. What is it? I just remembered I retired early, and last night I awoke about 11.30. I called for Alice, but another nurse came instead. She told me Alice had left early, complaining of a headache. I see. Well, thank you, Senor Morales. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I head for Parker's bar. Dean is sitting outside in a radio car in communication with his man who's watching Alice's apartment. So far, she hasn't budged, and Dean tells me that Parker came straight back to the bar. At this point, I figure it's time I paid a visit to Parker. I find him in the back room. Hey, what's the big idea? You and I are going to have a talk, Parker. Talk? I don't know you. You will. Get out of here. Oh, no. I want to talk about dynamite. Dynamite? Oh, no. Just leave that gun where it is. <laughs> 
Let go of me. Hey, where's that dynamite? I hidden? don't know. Did that refresh your memory any? I tell you, I don't know. Okay, Buster. Stop, stop it. You had enough, huh? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to take a look at this piece of string with the four knots. What does it mean? I don't know. Now, look. I'm telling you the truth. I never saw that piece of string before in my life. Okay, then tell me where all that dynamite is hidden. I don't know that either. All right, Parker, you're asking for another one. Look, look, you gotta believe me. I just run messages in the organization. Carried a warning to the boss. That's my job, but yeah, I... Yeah, I saw you delivered a little while ago in a book, wasn't it? <sighs> yeah, but honest, I don't What's know... What's the dynamite gonna be used for? And don't tell me you don't know that or I'll... Uh, take it easy. Okay. Yeah, I can tell you about that. In the event of war, it's gonna be used for sabotage. It's already planted around various places. That I know, but I don't know where. And it's to be set off in the event of war, huh? Yeah, an hour after the boss gives a signal. Signal? What signal? Three skyrockets over Panama City. Red bursts. I see. Okay. Now I'll... Another gun! Steve, you must be hard up for exercise. Yeah, you better have this baby put on ice, Major. All right. My man just radioed that Alice Gaines left her apartment and took a bus. He told me which line we can pick it up in my car. Okay, let's go. I don't get it, Steve. Alice came right here to the hospital with that book under her arm. Yeah, now she's heading down the path. Keep back. I don't want her to spot us. Wait, look. She stopped beside one of the patients. Hey, that's Senor Morales. Look, she's handing him the book. Yeah, come on. Oh, I was in my apartment this afternoon, Senor Morales. A man who said he was a friend of yours stopped by. His name is Parker. He wanted me to bring you this book. Well, that is very kind of you, my dear Garcia. I'll take that book, Morales. Me, sir. Thanks. Now, let's see what's in it. Give it back. Steve, what's this all about? Looks like we had the wrong party pig, Steve. Yeah, here we are. A note in the front of the book. U.S. agent aware of your identity. Be careful. Looks like that little gag you pulled on Miguel paid off. Very clever of you, Mitchell, but not clever enough. What? Steve. Well, I guess that gun makes you the doctor instead of the patient. Exactly. Now you will all turn around and face in the other direction at once. You won't get very far, Morales. I will take my chances on that. Let me warn you that I am an excellent shot. If any of you turn around before I am out of sight, you will be killed at once. I didn't even know he could walk. Yes, but I don't see how he can get very far. He's pretty weak. Any prolonged exertion is liable to kill him. Well, at least this explains why Slater got acquainted with Alice here. He had a line on Morales and figured this would be a good way to stay close to him. Wait, he's out of sight now. Come on, after him. But Morales had done a good job of dropping out of sight. We searched the entire grounds and surrounding area, but he's gone. Major Dean puts out a radio bulletin on him, and then we head back to Dean's office. It's after dark when we get there. I'd sure feel a lot better if we had Morales in custody, Steve. So would I. He must have been saving an escape plan for a situation like this. Well, all my boys and the National Police are alerted. Sooner or later, we've got to come up. Look, up in the sky. Skyrockets. Yeah, three of them. Red burst. Steve, that's the signal that you were telling me about. Yeah. Morales figures he might as well shoot the moon now that he's been discovered. And Parker said those charges are already planted. That's right. They'll be exploded in one hour, and we haven't the slightest idea of where they are. All right, Steve, what are we going to do? There's 20 minutes gone. We're no closer to the answer. You have all your units alerted. Certainly. I'm in radio communication with all of them. But what good's that do? I don't know where to send them. Yeah, we got to figure out where that dynamite is planted. But how, Steve? Blindfold ourselves and stick pins in a map? Trouble is, there are so many defense installations in this area, you can't cover them all. Well, you can say that again. Here, look. Huh? Here's where we are on the map. Yeah. I can take a compass with just a five-mile radius and draw a circle. Yeah. And in the area of that circle alone, there must be 50 installations. Say nothing of a couple of the canal locks. They're over here. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, what is it? What did you just do? What do you mean, what did I just do? I, I just drew a circle. What about it? Yeah. The string, Dean. The piece of string. Hey, that's right. Did Slater have a code map like this? Sure, sure, I gave him one. He probably burned it when he knew that they were coming after him in his apartment, but he figured out a way to tell us what he knew. Look, I put one end of the string here at headquarters. Yeah. Then I trace a circle with the other end. Now watch where those knots in the string fall on the map. All right. Are they passing over any installations? Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, one of the knots just passed over a canal lock. Copy down the code name. All right. Um, okay. Uh, another knot passed over a radar installation. All right, keep going. Okay, let's see. Third knot passes over the powerhouse. Yeah. The nearest knot. No, that just passes over a hill. Doesn't look like there's anything here, but 
Hey, there's a code name on it. Brother, I wonder how he found out about that. What are you talking about? Steve, hidden in the side of that hill is the communication center for the whole canal zone. Blow that up and the entire area is paralyzed. Great. Oh, we better get word to your units. Yeah. Attention, all units in security operation. Attention. Unit Abel, cover installation code name Watchdog. Unit Baker, take code name Gravy Boat. Unit Charlie, take code name Sad Sack. Report completion of mission. Okay, Steve, that takes care of the canal lock, the radar station, and the powerhouse. We'll take the communication center ourselves. Let's go. Here's where we turn off the highway, Steve. Hey, is that the hill up ahead of us? Yeah. They've really done a job of camouflage, haven't they? Wait a minute, look. There's a red light in the road up ahead. A tail light. Yeah, he's stopping at the foot of the hill. Somebody's getting out. Steve, it's Morales. Yeah, so he's doing the honors personally at this location. Stop the car. Okay. I dive out and start running after Morales. He's struggling up the hill toward a clump of bushes, but he's weak and I'm gaining on him. He throws a shot at me. It bounces out of a rock at my left and he starts for the bushes again. He's staggering now, but he keeps going. Then he stops, points his gun at the ground and pulls the trigger just as I jump him. Okay, drop that gun. Oh, Steve! Steve, you okay? Yeah. Oh, brother. Morales. Steve, is he dead? Yeah. Alice was right when she said any exertion would kill him, but he couldn't even raise his gun. Just fired into the ground. Huh? But at least he lasted long enough to know that he'd lost out. Too bad he couldn't have hung on long enough to find out the rest of his boys were picked up, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got the radio report just after you jumped out of the car. All three installations covered. Seven suspects arrested, all dynamite located. Uh, that was really close, but... What's the matter, Steve? Hey, you. You hear anything? No, no, why? Oh, nothing. Hey... You know, that shot, it wasn't an accident. He hit a dynamite fuse. Come on. Where is it? I don't know. Over there, Steve. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on, find it! I can't. Oh, here, Steve, I got it! There! Oh, oh, brother. Oh. oh. Hey, look, you know where I can find a real cozy spot around here? Cozy spot? What for? So I can have a nice, quiet, nervous breakdown. Move over, I'll join you. <laughs> Well, one thing I'm grateful for, anyway. What's that, Steve? That it isn't the 4th of July. Why? What do you mean? If I'd have heard so much as one firecracker go off while we were shagging around after this dynamite, I'd have gone right up and smoke. Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Carn. Others in the cast were Stacey Harris, Val Brown, Kay Stewart, Byron Kane, Don Diamond, and Raymond Hartman. Be with us again next week at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another dangerous assignment. Recent figures disclose that more Americans have died on our highways than in all our wars. One main cause of death on the highway is lack of courtesy. A good rule to observe is that of America's friendly truck drivers. Courtesy and consideration to all motorists. Remember, the life you save may be your own. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's an hour and a half of the very best in music, Comedy and drama tomorrow on The Big Show, when MC Tallulah Bankhead's guest list includes Judy Holliday, Carmen Miranda, Jimmy Durante, Rex Harrison, and many more. 
And there's another outstanding one-hour production by Theater Guild on the Air. Also tomorrow, it's Tale of Two Cities, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Now, it's The Man Called X on NBC. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.